Okay, so in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to cover how to dispatch work orders to your techs. And this doesn't make a difference whether or not they're subcontractors that you're using or people that are in-house. The process is, is that you are assigning this work order to a specific person. So in this case, it's assigned to David Waters. And now we want to get this to him. Uh, whether or not he's in the office, he can, and if he's using Mother Note, he can get an, uh, an application alert within the program as soon as it's been assigned to him, as well as an email that goes along with this. So if he or she is in the field, um, they can receive this in their email, and there's a couple of actions that they can perform to acknowledge that they've received it and accept it. This also applies to your subcontractors, and those subcontractors still get the same benefit without having to be a user of Mother Note or have access to your Mother Note account. All right. So let's take a look at how this works. We're gonna we're going to dispatch this to David Waters. So I'm going to click up over here um, to dispatch to David Waters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at a couple of things on screen to let you know that this has been done. So over here, I can see here the email has been sent to David Waters. We also have a little email icon over here that indicates that this, this work order was sent. Okay. Down below, we also have a confirmation that's been stamped within the actual notes themselves that says the name of the user who dispatched this work order. And now we have this on file with a time and date stamp that this was sent to David, okay? Furthermore, a couple of things over here are these sent files, just like if you were sending a quote for approval or an invoice for payment, the same thing happens with work orders being sent to your installation teams, whoever that may be. It shows that this is the type, it was for download, um, it was sent to David Waters, here's the date and time, and this is the status that's pending. So we already know that David has not received or viewed this just yet. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then over here, we can view this, which I'm not going to do here. I'm going to view it from David's perspective, which is going to be exactly the same thing. But if I made a mistake in this, what I can do is I can go ahead and expire this work order, and then their link to access this will no longer work. Okay, so we have that. All right, so now what we want to do is, I'm just going to go back over here to the header very quickly and uh, we see that there's one schedule time in here okay so we can see that this is a, a good chunk of time that's being scheduled for him I can make some changes I can add to this etc another trip and so on but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna see what we sent David so you can see here David has been uh, received an email for work order number 61 so he opens this up we see the details who had assigned it to David from the company name as well so he knows in this specific case uh, who's who's been sending this of course this would be a familiar template that he becomes used to and um, in this specific instance over here you can see the uh, service info this is the name of the customer that's going to be uh, receiving the service and also the contact that's on file now of course if this is a received on a smart device the phone will be clickable as well as the uh, email um, so you can correspond with your customers directly by uh, using your thumb to just click on this and then giving them a call. So if that's important to you where you want to announce your arrival, where you are in your process and when you expect to be there, um, that's another courtesy you can send to your customers just by um, clicking on that information. Now if we had more than one trip, we'd see them as well down here, but basically we have one trip for this. He sees what this is and he can go ahead and add it to his calendar. Now important to note that if he is a user within the organization or a user of mother node then he already has access to this calendar information but what this also does it makes mother node calendars for specific installation teams or installers that are subcontractors it gives them access to that calendar information as well so if they click on this what will happen is is that I'm not going to go through the process, but it'll open up their iCal, open up their Outlook, Gmail, whatever that may be, and then uh, they'll be able to receive, um, they'll have their calendar for your installations for them, past, present, future, available in their particular calendar, and uh, so they don't have to do that again. So when changes are made, they're reflecting in real time uh, in their calendar as well, okay? All right, some special instructions were located down below. So there was a gate code that was added here. So he or she knows that they have this information should they need it. And then just to jump a little bit further down below, this is the uh, team of uh, within your organization that's responsible for managing this account. So we can see that we have um, the project manager as well as the sales rep and their contact information over here. Okay, so this is uh, available um, to them. And then also now they can go ahead and do one of three things. And some of these are a little bit redundant. It's just a matter of where you want to do it in the process. So they can download the work order. 
Okay, immediately what it does is it downloads the PDF for the work order so they can see if they have this information available to them if they want to see the work that has to be completed. Okay. The next thing that they can do is they can view the work order. So if they want to view it directly online within their browser, this is the familiar look that basically has you know, who had prepared it, all this information here, and then of course they can download it like we just did, or they can accept the work order from here. Okay, so this is another screen that you can be working in. And then finally, if they're just used to working this way, then they can go ahead and just accept the work order immediately. And when they click on this, what it does is it gives them a confirmation screen. They also get an email that's sent to them that basically says, you know, you've accepted this work order and it looks something similar to this. And they can download the accepted work order from here. Okay. Now, another thing to note is that um, you can also uh, have the, the PMs and the sales reps that are here, they will also receive a, um, a message similar to this one. Sorry, similar to this one here. Okay, so this is going to come through alerting them that this has been downloaded. Back in the transaction itself, okay, if we go over here to the sent files, we can now see that it's been accepted. This is also tracked within here, okay, so we know when it was accepted and by who. And then, of course, we can see that in the listing over here that this was downloaded. And where that comes into play also is in the actual list itself. So you can see these ones have been downloaded. The icons represent, you know, the different types of activity that happens there. Okay. So when I click on this, go back over here. The final place that we can see is, is David Waters has accepted the work order on March 9th, et cetera. And it date stamps it for you. So you have all of these different places that this was accepted. And, of course, finally, you would get these in-application notifications that you know this new work order has been accepted all right so that is the process of dispatching work orders and making that information available to your uh, your installers as well as your subs and um, you know of course giving them all the information they need to properly service the customer and of course communicate back with you if there are any questions or things that need to be uh, addressed uh, with that specific field trip